In this screencast, we're going to develop a ternary phase diagram using an equilibrium data table. The first step in this process is simply to define your axes. Here I'm going to use a right triangle version of a ternary phase diagram, but the same process could be used to develop one using an equilibrium triangle. When we compare these axes with our data table, we see that we're going to look for on the x-axis water information. Let's look at one data set for water compositions shown here. The corresponding composition for our y-axis will be for acetic acid. So if we look at the compositions associated with acetic acid that correspond to these water compositions, they're in the column immediately adjacent. So now all we simply have to do is plot the blue data, the water data, on the x-axis and the orange data, or the acetic acid data, on the y-axis. And I've done so here. So now we have compositions associated with the water layer associated with this system. Now we're simply going to do the exact same thing, taking water compositions and acetic acid compositions and plotting those on the x and y axis respectively. If we do so there, we now have added the data set associated with that isopropyl ether layer. So now we have distinct compositions associated with the layers present in this system. Now if we look at all of these compositions we've plotted thus far, these are all the compositions that settle out from a two-phase system of varying compositions. So these compositions are going to be the ones that define the boundary between a one-phase region and the two-phase region we typically see in a ternary phase diagram. So if we connect those dots, we see that this really starts to look like what we expect to see in a ternary phase diagram. We can add to this diagram the components that are associated with each corner of the diagram and also the diagonal line connecting 100% acetic acid and 100% water. And here we can see compositions that would result in a one-phase system or other compositions that would result in a two-phase system. And it's this two-phase region that's typically useful for liquid-liquid extraction. Now the last aspect of a ternary phase diagram we're missing is the tie lines which define equilibrium. We're given information in terms of water layer compositions and also isopropyl ether layer compositions. And the compositions that lie in the same horizontal row are represented as being in equilibrium with each other. So if we connect those two points using a straight line, we've drawn a tie line. We can do that for the next two data points in the table and connect those and develop our next tie line. We can continue to move down the table, continuing to plot tie lines between the two adjacent points. And by doing so, we've developed tie lines for the entire system.